If I asked you to describe your soil, what would you try and describe it as? If you don't know what you'd say, this is perfect for you. Today in this video, we'll be talking about the physical properties of soil, what are the main four, uh, and what we can basically learn from looking at these characteristics of our soil in terms of what it means for our production. My name is Till Simmons. I run this channel, Agriculture Explained. I also run AgriSol, which is a regenerative agriculture consulting business. I make these videos for free just to share um, information about soil science and help growers. Um, it's completely for free, so, so if you like the content, make sure to subscribe. And it would do me a big favor if you could also share this with someone that you think would enjoy learning about soil science um, or some of the other things we have on the channel. Cool, all right, let's get into it. So texture, texture is so important for our soil because it determines so many things uh, in terms of how it behaves and how it acts under different circumstances and the crops that we can grow on it. Now, originally all soil texture comes from its parent rock. Depending on the rock that the soil formed from will determine the amount of clay, silt and sand as well as its age. We'll have a whole nother video in the future uh, talking about parent rock material and and how it contributes to uh, soil characteristics. But starting off, there's texture. Now texture, if you think of it, if you reach down to some soil and you pulled out um, a bit of soil and you felt and you, and you feel the individual grains, texture just describes the individual grains of soil. So the individual soil um, particles. And there's three types. There's clay, clay is super small. 0.002 mils in size or in diameter. Uh, this is our smallest. Clay is also quite special because it has uh, negatively charged sites on, on the clay, or most clays do, um, which attracts nutrition effectively, or positively charged nutrition called cations. So clay is our smallest. And we have silt. Silt's a bit larger. It's from 0.002 to 0.02 mil, uh, millimeters in diameter. And then we have sand, which is quite large. Um, so sand's quite large, it's from 0.02 to two mils. And then if you get larger than two mils, it's, it's classified as um, gravel. Now, sand and silt don't have any charge. And so they do not contribute to our cation exchange capacity, which is what I was talking about with the, um, the positively charged nutrition. We've got a whole nother video on uh, chemical properties of soil. So you can check that out uh, on the channel as well. Effectively, they are our three soil textures, but they but they are our three soil particles that make up all our all of our soils. So one really good way we can um, describe our soils and our soil texture is basically the combination of these words, as well as um, loam. So loam is basically an equal mix of all three. But effectively, we have clayey soil, we have sandy clay soil sandy clay loamy soil, uh, sandy loamy soil. So that's how that's what we can use to describe the texture. So we have clay, um, silty, sandy, and loam. This triangle can help us determine which of those uh, is our soil. So to read this triangle is quite confusing, but effectively, if you can see the arrows on uh, my diagram, they point in a particular way. Say you have a soil with uh, 50% clay, you would go on our clay side, 50% now clay reads acrossways. So it would go 50% and then read across, which means it could be either, so if we if we knew it was 50% clay, um, it could either be a sandy clay, clay or silty clay. So if we knew it was, for example, 50% or 40% sand, sand reads up on an angle like that. So this soil would be a sandy clay. It also means that we have 10% silt because if we have 50% clay, 40% sand, 10% silt, that equals 100 and so we're happy. Likewise, if you had say 40% sand, which reads up this way, you had uh, say 20% clay. So you're about here reading across, sand going up, you'd be a sandy loam. And then 50% or whatever the remaining percent clay and whatever the remaining percent silt is. So that's how you read this. So this is super important for determining a lot of our other um, soil characteristics because each of these will behave differently in, in the amount of these particles in our soil 
will determine how our soil behaves. So for example, vertisols, which are very high in clay, so 35% clay, they have a shrink swell action, so the soil cracks up a lot. Um, clays tend to disperse quite easily, which means you can get surface sealing. All these things are determined by our texture. From texture, we have structure. Structure is how these soil particles clump together, which also determines a whole range of different characteristics of our soil. So first we have single grains, which are just individual bits. Think of a sandy beach. You can actually see the individual bits of sand. That is the first type of structure, uh, single grains. Very typical of sand, very sandy soils. Next we have granular. Granular is about um, half a centimetre in size. This is actually probably the best um, structure you can get. If it's a nice granulated soil, it's not too compact, it's not too light means that we're not going to be able to erode this away easy. With a single grain, there's a big risk of erosion because none of this is held together. And so it can be you know, washed away by water or blown away by wind. Granular is good. There's a bit of uh, clumping, a bit of aggregation to hold it all together. Uh, it's not going to prevent water flow, gas exchange, um, or uh, root uh, moving throughout the soil. This is what we need to try and achieve. Then we have blocky. This is uh, slightly more compact, compacted soil, but it's a bit more on the granular side. So there are limitations, but it's not too bad. Typically, blocky soil is between point, uh, 1.5 to 5 centimetres. Next, we have platy soil. Platy is very typical of uh, compacted soils, and basically you form these plates on the soil. Uh, this is very bad for gas exchange and water exchange as well as roots trying to explore the profile because if you think about it, if you have water hit here, it's not going to be able to seep, uh, seep down into the soil. It has to continue along the plate until it finds an opening and then flows down. This is very bad for uh, water infiltration, which is very important for plant growth. Next we have prismatic. Prismatic is almost a, a larger blocky type uh, structure. They're just very long Blocky aggregates basically, quite long, um, not very good. Finally, we have massive soils. There is no structure, it's all clumped together. Very bad for um, trying to do anything with. So all of these determine the amount of gas that flow into our soil, which is very important for our plants to breathe and our microbes to breathe, as well as water that flows into our soil and our roots to explore. So typically you want a nice amount of um, space in our soil for all of that. Having massive platy and prismatic soils is going to prevent that. And this is a sign of compaction, which is very typical of clay soils. See how it flows across. However, single grain is very typical of sandy soils. So we don't want to be on either end. We want to be in the middle here because uh, single grains can either compress really easily and so then you get surface sealing, which is typical of clay, or in sandy soils, actually doesn't stop the water. So it goes straight through and then washes out. We don't keep any of it. Now all of this flows on to the next one, porosity. Porosity is the amount of um, air space or what's called pore space or void space in our soil. So this is everything other than the mineral component of our soil, which is the uh, soil particle component uh, and our soil organic matter component. So this is basically all the empty space if we took all the water out. So you can see here we have a effectively a, a soil that has maybe 50% pore space. This is really good because we can get air to flow in, we get water to flow in, it's going to have really good water infiltration rates. Roots are going to be able to move all the way through this profile. Whereas if we have a profile like this, which might only be 20% pore space, water's not going to be able to get in. And what does, it's actually not that much. A lot of it's going to flow off. Our roots can't explore that much. It's going to be quite limited in what we can do. So we're going to want to try and aim for 50% pore space to ensure that we get all those benefits like gas exchange and water, water flow. Finally, we have bulk density. Bulk density is the amount of mass of soil in a particular uh, volume. So it's, a, it's a, the density of the soil. And we can use our bulk density to describe almost our porosity. The units of bulk density can either be grams per centimeter squared, or it could be megagrams per meter squared or tons per meter squared. They're all the same. So if you have a 1.4 
grams per centimeter squared. That's going to equal the same as megagrams and tons. It's, it's all the same. Now, the ideal bulk density varies with our soil texture. So for a sand, the ideal bulk density is 1.6, and roots start to stop um, effectively growing, or they start to struggle in about 1.8. Whereas in a loam, it's, uh, the ideal is less than 1.4, and roots start to stop at 1.8 again. And in really clay soil, soils, it's ideal to have a very low um, bulk density, less than 1.1, and roots start to stop growing at 1.47. So there's a really scientific way we can measure bulk density, um, and there's also not. And that way is basically you get a, a cylinder and you smack it into the ground, there's a couple of calculations on it. So if we're at home or on the farm and you just want to get a, a simple, roughly right calculation of your bulk density, and there will be errors in it, but if we want to get it roughly, what we can do is get two measuring jugs, fill one up with say 100 mils of water, and what we're going to do is going to try and get some undisturbed soil. So if you put your shovel in, uh, get a bit, carefully move that out. You don't really want to break it up because that's going to disturb the structure, porosity of the soil. What you're going to do is you're going to first weigh the jug, tear it, add the soil into it so we can find out what the actual mass of the soil is. That's what we're trying to get. We're trying to get the mass. So if you get the undisturbed soil, put it into the jug, weigh that, and then we're going to get our other jug uh, with the water in it, about 100, about 100 mils of water, add that in, and then what we're going to do is we're going to measure that water rise. So this is what it's going to look like. So we have uh, the soil here. Originally, the water level was at 100, but it's increased to 173. Now, before we weighed the soil, it weighed about 98 grams. Now, the water level increased to 173, which means that the soil has displaced about 73 centimetres squared of water. Now, this is very important. You want to make sure that the soil is sitting on the bottom. Otherwise, it's not going to quite work. You want it to be sitting on the bottom so that it's displacing its volume. But effectively, this volume here, the water that goes up, is going to be equal, or roughly equal, to the volume of this soil. Then to work out a bulk density, we're going to get the weight, put it over our volume, or we go weight divided by volume to get our bulk density. And for this example, it's 1.34. And say, for example, it's a loamy soil, that's going to be pretty good. Otherwise, you can do it in the labs and it's a bit more complicated. Awesome. Well, that's it for the chemical properties of our soil, or at least the four major properties. If you enjoyed this, make sure to share with a friend uh, and to subscribe to the channel. Awesome. Thanks for watching. My name's Steel Cheese.